we're going to say hello to Sean Sullivan. And Sean is the owner, um, the, the, the everything guy with 3G's Media. And Sean has been our chamber um, website developer, um, consultant, uh, fixer, <laughs> guru. <laughs> And um, one of the things that, that we have noted um, over um, uh, the past year or two is that not a whole lot of you are taking advantage of your specialty page um, that uh, has been developed for you, but you get to fill in the blanks, if you will. So um, what we want to do is take your before page and turn it into the after page. So if you watch any DIY programs, you'll know what I'm talking about. Um, but there's ways that you can zhuzh up uh, your your uh, page, your specialty page, and um, help increase your SEO. So on that note, I'm going to uh, let Sean take over, and um, I'm going to go ahead and mute myself, and uh, we'll go from there. How's that sound? Welcome, Sean. Hi, everyone. Good to meet you all again. Some familiar faces that I've seen for a long, many time, uh, but it's good to see you guys. I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen real quick. So uh, bear with me for a second. Uh, says, cannot share screen, Linda. All right, there we go. So this is the uh, Lakewood Chamber website. And uh, right now I'm looking at a profile uh, for Connie Duty, insurance agent. Um, she has not filled out her information, uh, but I wanted to give you the basic uh, membership page that all members get that is created by uh, the staff at the chamber uh, once you become a member of the Lakewood Chamber. Uh, so basically you have your business name and then it gives information about your, your category. So chamber member, healthcare. And over here you have insurance member, senior assistance, and these are the tags for SEO. And these are entered in either by myself or staff at the Lakewood Chamber. And then there's actually a, um, a brief um, bio or information that's gathered by the staff where they type it in into this area. And then you have your address and a map of your location. And it's a fully interactive map where people can find you. Uh, if you have a home business, you can opt not to show the exact location on the map of your home business for uh, obvious reasons. So you could just say generally in Lakewood and then not have it actually pinpoint to your actual location. And that's something that you can converse with uh, the chamber staff to find out uh, how to get that taken care of. And then there's a phone number and email. Now this is a basic profile uh, with no bells and whistles in terms of logos, links, additional information. And so you're probably asking yourself how do you update this information? So up here in the menu, if you go to the chamber and you click here where it says web page profile, when you click that link right here, you'll get this page that has a web page profile and then it requires a password. And then when you do so, you come to this page right here and it's a web page profile. It's a 10 part form that gives you the ability to uh, fill out the information. We give an example of Tacoma Trophy right here. And uh, what that is, is uh, the first profile that I created when we've got the website up and running. And I've already filled out my information uh, so that I don't have to type and bore you guys by slow typing and misspelling. Uh, we have the ability to save and continue. So when you're filling out this form and you've gotten to page three and then you get a phone call, uh, you're more than welcome to save and continue later uh, and come back to the form and it'll remember everything that you filled in. Um, so right here, if you hit next, so right now you have like contact net name and email and phone number, but if you hit next, you can see that it breaks up the information so it's easy to digest. So the first part was your contact information so I know who you are. Um, when we didn't have the 
page password protected, I would typically have to contact Scott or Sue to ask if this was actually a member. But now that it's been password protected, it's a little more protected and we're not getting any false uh, submissions. But this gives you the opportunity to fill out information about your business, how you want your company name to ex appear exactly in your membership profile, what your web page is, who the owners are, uh, your company contact information, so your company email, company phone, your fax number. If you hit next again, uh, it gives you the opportunity to go to the next section. And bear with me while I'm in a Zoom meeting and also online. It has uh, a physical address, uh, a mailing address, and you can pick and choose which one you want to show on the web page. So you have, if you want your physical address shown or a mailing address shown or none of the above. Or you could click these two together and say you want both physical address and menu address to be shown. You hit next, goes on to the next section. Uh, ask you for your company logo, which is a file, let's say a JPEG or a PNG. And you would click here and browse to your particular image and then put in some of your colors uh, that you have for your business. And usually it's a primary and secondary color. Uh, that kind of gives me an idea of how I possibly could dress up uh, the website if necessary, for instance, like buttons and so forth. Hit next. Um, you can put in your industry, you can clarify your industry if you wish. Um, Scott uh, does a pretty good job of putting you into a, the industry that you signed up for as a member. But if you want to uh, go any, any further, you could write out more information about the industry and we can plug you in for the keywords for that particular industry. Uh, your mission statement, uh, your welcome statement. Obviously this is fake text that I just typed in from uh, a generator, but you could type whatever you want and you have about 300 characters. And, and as you type, uh, this information will give you the ability to, uh, this, this number will go down. Uh, then you have your list, your services, and we like to make sure we have services in a, in a format that's kind of like a bullet point. And I try to do them in columns, like one, two, and three columns. So some profiles I've created in, in the past, uh, they will have probably 10 to 15 different services. And what I do is I, you know, highlight, you know, the, let's say there's, 12 of them, I highlight the first six, put them in column one, highlight the last six and put them in column two. Um, let's hit next. Here we have links. Uh, we provide or ask for uh, five links for your, uh, to link to your current page uh, for your own personal web page or your own personal company page. And uh, I've had some uh, staff members, or it's not staff members, but members of the Lakewood Chamber put a label in front of the link to let me know what they want the label to be named as. But currently right now, I just simply paste in the URL, which is the web address uh, that's typically up here in the uh, browser window. And I paste it here. So right now I would like to have my first link be the about page. My second link will be my services. My third will be my FAQ. My fourth will be my contact. And maybe my fifth could be a request a quote. And these are typically the common pages that you would find on your own business or you know, company website. And you can have them in any order you wish, and you can have them be any link you wish them to be. And they're up to about five. Hit the next again, and here we have you. Uh, we like to know what your Facebook uh, web address is. Um, Scott is really good about getting this information. Sue as well, when they do an application with a member, you know, they typically you might ask them what the Facebook uh, page is, what their Twitter feed ID is going to be, what their LinkedIn ID is, Instagram, etc. And they may have already filled some of this stuff in in for me. Uh, but if you'd like to update it with a current uh, page or current information or make some corrections, maybe there was an error that was made, you have the opportunity to let us know what the correct information is here or what you would particularly like to have uh, in this area. And uh, uh, let me go previous. I need to show you something real quick. So um, you notice that none of these have an asterisk, and I'm sure you've done forms online. 
but uh, if you do the, uh, when you're looking at a form, anything that has an asterisk on it is required. So if this wasn't filled out uh, here, then the form will tell you that you're missing information and you can't continue on until you get it corrected. I forgot to mention that. So if you see an asterisk on a form, typical uh, throughout the internet uh, on forms, this is like, for instance, this one right here, you don't have to fill in, but this one you do have to fill in. And that's what that asterisk means right there. Um, let's get back to where we were. Oops. Sean, when you're in those links, can you click on them and it will take you to that location? Not in a form. That form is just to have you submit it to me in an in a email, and then I'll show you how I put them in the page. So this is just the profile page that gets filled out by members. They're going to give me the information that I need to build the page for them. So no, those are not clickable. It's only on the member page pages that it will be clickable. Thank you. Uh, so we'll hit next. Uh, well, here we have a YouTube video uh, where you can provide the link to your favorite YouTube that you, video of yourself. You can also provide a Vimo video. Uh, so those are two different locations I recommend that you upload uh, your videos to for free hosting, basically. Uh, Vimo does have a free um, starter kit, uh, but they do require, uh, so YouTube is free, but Vimeo, Vimeo has a free one, but they uh, to have no ads you can pay to have a adless uh, account with Vimeo and post your videos there. Uh, but basically you provide me the link for that and I'll post that in the actual web page uh, itself. And we, we typically would only like to have one video per members uh, page uh, because <clears throat> uh, you could, you could certainly have a link like those five links linking to your personal page or company page at YouTube. Uh, but to have an embedded video that's actually displayed in your actual page as an embedded video, we typically like to keep it down to just one. Uh, that's for resources, not making you know making sure the web page loads quickly. So one is uh, perfectly fine, and uh, that's what we limit it to. And this this link right here. Let me go to my tab for YouTube. If you're on your uh, so this is the chamber, uh, you know. Um, YouTube channel and we're at a video you click here on share and you have various different ways of sharing it you can share it by email Twitter Facebook but you can click on uh, this copy button and it copies whatever the URL is that YouTube assigns to you you also can click here uh, so like our, I'm seven minutes into the video so if you find a, a space on the video where you'd like to start Let's say you want to do 15 seconds in, you go to 15 seconds on the video by hitting play and, and clicking on the pause at the 15 second, and then you click here, it will add that additional piece to the URL that you can give me, and the video will start specifically at that time. And you just hit copy. Uh, so if you go back to here, oops, back to here, and you paste it in here, you see how you paste it in, and you would save, and it would give me that information. So I just hit next. Uh, here we have the ability for you to upload additional uh, pictures and photos. Um, so far, I haven't had for the several uh, pages that I've done so far. Um, the only one who's done a lot of photos was uh, the trophy, Tacoma Trophy, uh, Dottie from Northwest Optum, and a few others like Cascade Blood, uh, uh, Blood Center, I think it's called. Uh, so you have the ability to upload your, um, you know, JPEG, GIF, or PNG files of products, pictures of your store, um, you know, things of that nature. And that's your opportunity to do that here. You just hit select files and it will go to your uh, your desktop of your computer. You can browse through your, your computer's folders and pick and choose the files you want to upload. Um, and it gives you the specifics on the restrictions. Um, and then we also say that we want to make sure there's 600 pixels or, or uh, wide or better for the best formatting. We don't want a really small thumbnail 
uh, for the picture because it makes it hard to see and um, we want to make sure they're pretty consistent. Sean, how many, up yes. to how many photos can we can we add? Uh, well, you can put as many as you want in there, but um, you know, I, I wouldn't want to do 50 uploads, you know, I, I try to be reasonable and keep it within five or five to 10. Okay. Um, but yeah, you can do as many as you want, basically. And then okay. here, um, we have an authorization to uh, submit the profile. And there have been um, some folks that have uh, staff who have created the profiles for the company and they're not, they're not the actual owner. Uh, we do ask that you authorize this information to be submitted uh, by clicking here and then putting in your signature. And then we actually have, I am not a robot to make sure that you're not a, you know, a bot trying to fill out this form. And then when you click here, you hit submit, it creates an email and sends it to myself and Scott and Sue. And uh, we get it, we review the information, and then we go through the process of building those, that page. Uh, so if there's any questions before I show a couple pages, uh, I'd like to open up the floor for our questions. Any questions? Sean, I have just a couple of um, basic questions. So in the thing mm -hmm. about your um, putting in your tags and also colors, um, can we change those tags if we have specific um, words we'd like to use? And then also um, uh, for colors, do you have just the basic colors or we can we um, offer our Pantone colors to use at all? So. Uh, so in the online, any type of website, there's only so many colors that can be shown. So even if you did provide me your Pantone colors, um, I can certainly convert them to the RGB that's typical of a web page. So I can't match it specifically Pantones or for high quality printing. And so the computer screens, especially with people having so many different devices, you know, iPads, phones, uh, desktops, tablets, those colors won't be exact. So it's in your best interest to probably give me the lowest common denominator on those, on those, those those colors, make sure the colors are as best that for you. Uh, you can go online and search uh, Pantone to RGB conversion. Uh, so RGB is red, green, and blue, and it will give you the conversion of that Pantone. And if you're satisfied with that color, provide that number to me, and that will be your best bet. Uh, so you can either write out, you know, black and gold, or you can give me those specific hex numbers from RGB. And if you need assistance with that, you can always pop me an email and I can send you to the place to do the conversion uh, to get as close as you can to your Pantones. And then you also asked about whether or not you can change the labels to the links. Uh, what we do is you can submit the web page profile, um, you know, as many times as you wish. Uh, but we try to limit it to once, you know, a few, every few months. Uh, we don't want to be creating, uh, updating your page like every week, uh, you know, or every 30 days. Um, so if you actually have a submission and you want to make sure that a, a link gets updated because your web page changed, or you have new information you want to give us, you just go to the profile again, refill it out. Uh, with that information. And then probably in the future, I could possibly even take that portion out so you don't have to go through the 10 part and have you know, give you the opportunity to update the links specifically uh, so that you don't have to go through the 10 part process. But yeah, you can change it. We just, I would prefer not to have to do it like weekly uh, because the chamber actually is paying me to do those services and, you know, we gotta make sure we make it fair for everybody, so. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Okay, so um, I'm going to go back to Connie's page to give you a brief rundown again of a basic page that just has the basic information that's provided uh, through your membership application. So this is a Connie Duty insurance agent. And as you can see, it just has her categories, the membership tags, and a brief information about herself, her. Uh, map of her location and her phone number and email. Uh, but if you go uh, to the business page directory, which is found here, uh, you can see that we have all these industries. 
and you can search for any word or anything you want to do. Like you would type in the word hardware, optical, you can put the person's name in and it will uh, search that information and provide it here on the map. Currently, we actually have some uh, locations already highlighted because uh, it's based on my location that it's showing this information. Um, but this is basically the business directory map that is searchable. And then here is the, um, if you come here to the category, business directory by category, it shows all the categories in a big huge graphic or web, web page and makes this completely searchable by Google. Uh, so this is the SEO that Linda was talking about uh, that lists everybody. So if I were to click on credit unions, it would list all the credit unions. Or if I clicked on the churches, it would list only the churches, catering, cleaning service, education, et cetera. Um, I'm having a hard time seeing, I don't know how to minimize. So I can't see, I have to close some of these tabs because I can't see the tabs behind the Zoom but, uh, panel. So let me give you a moment. So uh, this, okay, so here is a page that was created for the Ferry Store based on her submission. Uh, Shirley Ritter, the owner, uh, she provided me her logo through the uh, web page profile. She uploaded the graphic and gave it to me. Uh, she provided me this text. Uh, she basically gave me her mission statement and other information here. Uh, gave me the full name of her business. And then she provided me additional links. So her website, in Instagram video, uh, shop online, 24 hour website availability, categories, uh, bendable, pedal fairies, fairy collectibles, Amy Brown. These are links that she provided with the actual labels. These are the services that she provided. And then it goes on to the other information like her Facebook and Twitter. So this is a basic uh, setup. Um, and basically it gets, you know, some of the branding from your business here, uh, highlight information, and I can try to format it in a way that I think would flow really well, whether or not it's left or right justified. Uh, once you look at your profile, you can tell me whether or not you want to move it to the left all rather than centered. But for this particular um, member, because the logo is so large and the information seemed to flow the best for center. That's how I chose it to be uh, shown for her. Let um, me close Connie's fairy store. This is Cascade Regional Blood Services. So you can see how I did it in a centered up here with a phone number being prominent and then the two photos and then their services and then a staff photo. And then it goes down to the basic for information. Uh, and it also shows their location. Uh, Roby's, they gave me their uh, logo and then they provided me uh, a, a tagline. They wanted to be prominent and then they have a video. So if I were to click this button, their video would actually start playing and you can see it's really prominent on the page. And you can see that it's a lot different than just the basic page uh, that Connie, duty, that, is it duty or I think it's duty um, has, but as soon as she submits her information to me, then I can update hers. Um, here's another bit of information that uh, Todd provided. And then he also provided uh, links that he wanted to have on the page. And then his services were a little bit short here so that I opted to have his services to the left and his name and location and everything on the right and also link to the map in case people didn't scroll to the bottom. It also shows his location here and if you zoom in, you can see it's right there on top of the building. Um, you can actually click here and do a street view. And then it has this phone number, e email, his web address, Facebook and Twitter. Uh, this is the Tacoma Trophy, the first profile that I did. And I've updated it. I believe uh, Judy provided two submissions for this page. Uh, she updated it uh, with additional information. I think something, uh, I think what's called, yeah, challenge coins and fantasy football. And she also wanted to order online and I figured that she'd pretty want that to be pretty prominent. Um, so she provided this information to me twice, uh, but this is her page. 
Uh, you can see the photos she, that she provided, or I believe actually I went to her page to get these, if I remember correctly. But that's another thing I can do too, is I can actually go to the page and if I find some photos of interest, I'll add them for you. Um, but you can see that she provided quite a bit of information about her business. Um, and just go through and, and making sure that her web, her, her location is correct, her hours, her phone number, um, and then like her LinkedIn profile, et cetera. So, and then it shows her location on the map as well. So if you zoom in, you can see that's the exact location of where she's located at. And then her phone number, uh, email, address, Facebook and Twitter. Uh, here's another one. This is uh, Government Business Northwest. And um, I made that stuff pretty prominent on his, made it sure the services are up the date and he wanted it to be reversed. I typically like to put the member at the very top, but he wanted these things to be at the very top first. And then he wanted to be tagged at the bottom with his name and his phone number and email. And then he also has a video. And he also asked to have his, uh, his Twitter feed directly embedded into the page. So you can see that I've actually embedded his Twitter feed here. So that's possible as well. Uh, here's Elliot Insurance Group. So their uh, dominant logo. And then the person who is the actual member and then left justified on their mission statement, how they work, et cetera. And then you can see the basis of their links that they provided. And then they have commercial insurance and personal insurance. Uh, look that I just saw a correction I need to make. And I'll do that occasionally. I'll go through the profiles and make sure I haven't made any mistakes. And uh, I'll try to remember that to update that for the uh, member. Uh, you come down here for a phone number, email, uh, web address, and Facebook. And they did not provide a Twitter uh, link, so you'll see that it's missing on their page because there's no Twitter link for them. Uh, so that's the presentation. Uh, if you would like me to look up anybody else, I can. But I'll, if you have any questions, say, uh, open the floor up for questions again. So, Sean. Yes. I, while you were going through this, I went to my page. And I started, I noticed I was 10%. So I started filling in for information. I was moving along. Then I hit the back button because I wanted to go back to the previous page. And then um, there was an error message that came up. It said 403 forbidden. Your access to this service has been limited, blah, blah, blah. That happened just now or it happened you said in the past? Just now. Oh, it did just now. Yes. So. Uh, well, what I would do is submit that information to me so I can take a look. Um, when, uh, if I click the back, the previous, um, it's working. So what browser are you using? I'm in, um, what am I in? Firefox. Okay, well, I will try it on Firefox on my own. Uh, but could you try a different browser possibly and tell me if you get the same results? Yeah, sure. Uh, that's a possibility, but I'll try it on Firefox to see if there's an issue that I need to look at. But thank you for bringing that to but, my attention. But, but it did it did kick me back to the very first page uh, where you put in your personal information. So basically, I got to start over. Did, did it remove all the information as well? It did, yes. Okay. Yeah, and, try a different try a different browser for me, and then I'll try it on my end at Firefox. Okay. And see if I get the same result. So. Okay. But thank you for bringing that to my attention. Yeah, so if we plug in all our information and whatnot, is there work that you have to do? Like, yes, I, I take that information and I create the page itself. Okay. Yeah, so... Because um, I, I thought I did this when, the, when we first rolled this out. I could have sworn I provided information. But... Well, I could, I could look that up. If you'd like to send me an email... What's um, your email? It's Sean Sullivan, S-H-O-N-S-U-L-L-I-V-A-N at gmail.com. Okay. And give me some information and I'll search the records of the forms that were submitted to see if I can track it down. Okay. Yeah, no problem. Thank you. No problem. 
And thank you for uh, asking your questions. Is there any other questions? Uh, Sean, I'd just like to comment. I like the way it's laid out. It's very simple and straightforward. The, the links are clear um, and easily, um, you know, a, to, it's easy to, to find those links in the priority parts of the pages. So I like it a lot. Um, just a question, do you provide any like analytics on, you know, people clicking through to those pages, things like that? I do. I uh, not. I could actually do it on specific pages for specific members if it was requested. Uh, but Linda and her staff do uh, regularly check in with me. Um, she has her, I think, her board meetings. I can't remember exactly when they actually do occur. But she does send me an email and say, hey, I have a meeting coming up soon and I'm reporting on the statistics of the website. I need those, that information. And I provide her a very lengthy report and she's received them. Uh, it can be kind of Greek in terms of how much data it provides. And I try to break it down for her so she has a little idea of what the difference is between a page visit versus a, a, a session. And, and Linda can probably attest that it has graphs and bars and you know it tells that all the different places that people come from. Uh, and it's a pretty impressive information, but it can be pretty overwhelming. So I try to pare it down so it's easy to digest. And um, but Linda, would you like to speak to that real quick? Um, no, I think you covered it. It 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 really oh, okay. is quite extensive. And so um, uh, I have, um, you know, when when we do specific campaigns or uh, uh, you know when when the pandemic hit, for example, um, the numbers just absolutely shot up and. Uh, same thing when we did our uh, our uh, uh, tourism campaign. Um, you know, you could you could see the the evidence spikes um, when when we were doing anything different um, and or special. So uh, it's 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 uh, great information to have uh, clearly to see if if um, any of your social media is is working uh, in the way that you wanted it to, to yeah. work. So yeah, yeah. And every page is it would, it would it would be it would be quite cumbersome if if all of our members wanted that. I mean that just yeah. So we, we can give you general specifics on how many visitors have come to the website, um, and then you know I can look up uh, a specific user, a specific member, and give them that number. Obviously, though, with the amount of members that we do have, I would <laughs> that would be a complete nightmare if that I got out and everybody wants to know what their stats were. <laughs> No problem. Um, Just curious. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> okay. But I appreciate the I appreciate the question. But thank you. Any other questions? Sean, do you want to touch on um, uh, recommendations? Um, recommendations ratings, for ratings. Uh, yeah, you know, shout outs, referrals, recommendations. Uh, um. Well, the thing is, is the, you know, for the page, it's specifically for your membership page and the details and require what is required to put on it to make it look better. Is that what no. you're asking? No, um, I thought we, we discussed that we were going to create a button on the, on the landing page. Um, I'm not aware of what that is. Okay. Well, we'll talk about that later. Okay. Uh, any other questions? Okay, now this. Uh, we got is... a question in the chat. We do. I think it might have come to me. It it just wants to know if um, who looks at this. Well, it's uh, the tourism part of the uh, website is the biggest part. Uh, it's also an information resource for both businesses and non, uh, you know, people of Lakewood and the surrounding communities. Um, if if I let's I can share real quick. Again, um, if you come here, we have the driving tours, and then we have a tourism uh, information. This is all searchable by Google. So if anyone's looking up for Lakewood Garden, Lakewood Gardens and Gravity Lake, then this information will come up 
and they have the opportunity to click this link or they can click a link for another website, obviously. Uh, but let's say like Thorn Castle, they want more information, they click this link. We have detailed information on that particular uh, venue. Uh, we also have down here in our town where we have the city of Lakewood and all their contact information, the police department and Lakewood Chambers information. And then we also have our different events. So you have the ambassadors and board of directors, general member lunch. You get all the information about all the different uh, events that are going on. Uh, with the chamber and also, for instance, like government affairs. All this information is inputted by the staff at the chamber. Um, I actually don't, not actually have any part in this. I set it up and then I help them maintain it, but this is all done by the staff at the chamber. And all this information is provided um, by them so that it's searchable. Uh, you can look, you can click on a specific items and add a reminder to have this information emailed to you, um, you know, et cetera. So it's, uh, that's basically what the Chamber website is about, is the ability for members to get information and also the community of Lakewood can go to the Chamber uh, to get the tourism information, to find out more about the town of Lakewood, uh, their history, etc. So if you click on here, you have like lodging information, casinos, golf courses, special events, um, if you come over here to press, it gives you like, for instance, I just posted the article for Sue right here and you could click this link and it will provide you the information that Linda submitted to me to have uh, uh, posted as an article. And last, the last you know, year, 2020 and then into 2021, we've been doing everything from the policy positions of Washington State and government affairs and everything that has to do with COVID to keep you informed. As you can see up right here, as of February 1st, restaurants are allowed to open their indoor seating to 25% capacity. And I try to keep up with this information from posts that I see from Linda and staff on Facebook, what I see in the news. Uh, so this is the information that we try to keep fresh on the page. Uh, major sponsors are up here in the right hand corner if you go to the uh, chamber uh, front page, I'll click on it real quick. You have the pictures uh, that Linda and her staff provided to me. And then we have the information about COVID and then uh, various informations about the different aspects of things that are going on. For instance, like quotes from those who are uh, members that are you know, champions of the Lakewood Chamber and the things that those that the chamber has done for their business. You have the ability to search a member and then it shows all the different sponsors. Uh, then you have your footer area. So there's tons of links to different locations. Uh, let's say Lakewood City, you know, Tacoma South Sound Sports, Regional Convention, Metro Parks. So it's pretty much open to everybody. Uh, so it's a public website. Uh, this is the public face of the website and these links go to various different areas. Uh, to give more, people more information. Uh, so that's the that's primary goal. So that's who the audience is, basically. So if I search for a business name or a business category, will it take me to that profile information that yeah, I have so, inputted? So like, yeah, so if I type in the word Dottie for Northwest Optical, it brings up her information. So if you click, it brings up her profile. Thank like you, that. Sean. Yep, so yeah, and that's searchable there. And it's also searchable uh, here. So uh, there's other information too, like we have the ben benefits and services. It talks about uh, like the message from the chair, board of directors, uh, chamber of staff, uh, like for instance, Sue's here, Scott, Linda and their profiles, job to the chamber, map to the chamber, contacting them and applying for membership. So yeah, so it's pretty extensive in terms of lots of links and uh, places to go to read more about what the chamber is all about. Um, and I think the primary focus, though, is to make sure that uh, everyone is excited about the different places they can visit in the Lake Lakewood area. Um, 
you know, the different businesses that are available. Um, the driving tours, I think, was a huge success. Uh, these were provided by uh, Linda and staff in the city of Lakewood, I believe. And you have, um, you know, their PDFs of the tours themselves and so forth. So, and this is all information that's readily available uh, through Google. Um, so if you were to type uh, self-driving itinerary, then Lakewood Chambers website would show up because this is all searchable content. So. Any other questions? <laughs>